Now, before the pitchforks come out, let me say that I've already heard a lot of the objections that people have to my painting of the utopian future. They tell me, look, driving is freedom. Driving is dignity. Driving is fun. Good driving is a skill. Why are you Silicon Valley types intent on stripping us humans from the things that bring us joy, from the things that make us skilled, from the dignity and inherent self-worth of driving a car? And I hear you. When you think about driving, one way you can think about it is cruising down the open road with your best friend singing along to your favorite song. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never once in my life had the experience that's pictured in this picture. And I can tell you that for every time I wish I had that experience, I had this experience instead a hundred times over. I'm late to the soccer game. I miss my flight. It takes me two hours to get my mom to her doctor's appointment, even though she lives 10 minutes away from the doctor's office. I've had so much personal stress from being in gridlock or being cut off for the third time. So for most of us, the reality of driving is more gridlock and being late than the joy of the open road. And so what I want you to think about is think about the upside. I want you to think about a world in which it's safer and greener and more convenient to get where you need, to get the stuff where you need, and all of that could come for a half or a third of the price that you're paying to do it today without you having to sit in any traffic. So the big question is when. When will all of this happen? Are we five years away? Are we 50 years away? Are we 100 years away from this? Probably the most aggressive of the analysts out there is a nonprofit organization called Rethink X, run by a guy named Tony Siba. He's a Stanford-trained economist, and he thinks that by 2026, which is just eight years away, the majority of the miles driven will be with self-driving electric cars. And that by 2030, which is only 12 years away, the overwhelming majority of miles are self-driving electric miles. So his estimate is nine to 13 years away. Bob Letts's estimate isn't that much further off. He thinks that this happens sometime in the next 20 years. So it's not 10, but it's 20. This is a consummate car executive who's worked at GM and BMW and Ford and Chrysler. And when he makes this prediction that we're 20 years away, he does it with a tear in his eye because it's going to rewire an industry that he was instrumental in building. So Bob Lutz's estimate is 20 years. Now, if you are an OPEC executive, you might think this is 50 or even more years away. And so we don't even have to start planning for it. But I want to come back to that story that I started with, which is sometimes these tech revolutions happen a lot faster than we think. And it certainly happened with cars in the first place. So I want to close with a pair of pictures. Here's New York City on Easter morning in 1900, and I want to play the game, Where is the Car? You'll see that in this massive parade coming down Fifth Avenue in New York City, there's exactly one car in a parade of horse-drawn carriages. Now let's fast forward just 13 years, same Easter morning, and we have to ask the reverse question, where is the horse? And if you look really carefully, you'll see in this photo, there's a horse driving down the left side. So in the space of 13 years, we went from almost all horses to almost all cars. 13 years. And that was an era in which technology dissemination happened much slower than it does today. So my bet is on faster rather than slower. And if that's the case, then we all need to be engaged in a conversation around how we want to produce our energy, how we want our cities to look, how we want our shopping infrastructures to operate, and we need to start engaging each other on these conversations right now because a lot of the decisions that we need to make will want a lot of conversation on them, will want a lot of smart people to contribute to the conversations, and they're going to have long-lasting implications. So let's get together, start having those conversations, and plan our way to this self-driving electric future. If we make the right set of decisions, we can live in cities and suburbs that are green and vibrant and safe but it's not a foregone conclusion. We all need to work together carefully and smartly so that the right set of decisions get made as we head into this future.